Welcome to Biology 137. My name is Karen Drake and I'll be your teacher. Please feel free to reach out. Use my cell phone where you can text me or call me or email me. Some of you have been trying to reach out to me through the Blackboard messaging system. And it's pretty glitchy. Sometimes the messages come through and sometimes they don't. So if you want to be sure and reach me, cell phone or email. I do have office hours. Most of them are on Newtown. Um, on Wednesdays, I'm in Lawrenceburg teaching. So I meet with students from Lawrenceburg area at that point in time. But we can always Zoom. I have the ability with Zoom to share my screen with you. So if there's something that you need help with, I can show it to you. I hope you have been watching my YouTube videos. Period. I try to put a whole bunch of humor in my YouTubes, but when you have me as a in-person teacher, I tend to tell a lot more jokes. I want to take a second to talk about student success. So click on this when you're in your syllabus and look and see what's available. Child care, if you're having trouble with someone watching your kids while you're taking classes, if you need tutoring, if you're having trouble with technology. I know we have about 500 laptops that we uh, loan out from the library to students if you don't have access to a decent computer. Some of the tests that you're going to be taking, you have to have a computer. And that's one of the things I've already gotten dozens of emails where kids are trying to take the class using their phone or take the class on an iPad or Chrome notebook. Chrome notebooks are great, but they don't have a camera, and so you can't use them for doing online tests because you have to have a, a computer or laptop with a camera. Another thing you're going to be seeing fairly soon is well, messages from Starfish. So a lot of students don't realize that not only do they get messages from Starfish, but they can actually go to Starfish and send a message to their teacher or to their counselor. I'm not sure why they call it Starfish, but it is an early warning system. So when periodically I will go through and I'll look at all of your grades and I'll make an assessment and I'll see that you've been missing too many classes. You've been turning in too many late assignments. You're grade point average is below 60%. And I'm going to send a message to Starfish and they're going to contact your counselor and see if they can figure out, or your advisor, see if they can figure out why you're not doing well, what you could do to improve your grades. I'll put little messages like needs to see a tutor or needs to come to class more often, things like that to give you an idea of what I think is going wrong and why things aren't going well. And then for those of you who are doing brilliantly, I'll be sending a starfish saying, hey, you are doing great. Keep up the good work. The next section of the syllabus tells you who my supervisors are. So here's my immediate supervisor and then her immediate supervisors and then their uh, immediate supervisor. If you try working with me and feel like you're just not getting anywhere, you can talk to them and say, well, this is what I've done with Miss Drake, and what can I do next? If you have an IEP or a 504 plan, you need to get in touch with the Student Accessibility Services Office, and they will email me and tell me what your accommodations are. So please self-advocate for yourself. Get in contact with them and make sure that you get the uh, services that you need. One of the things that has surprised me this semester, 
I have had a number of students who were really upset because when they looked at their schedule, it listed biology 137 and it gave certain hours and then it listed certain other hours. And they were trying to figure out which one of the two sets of hours that they were supposed to go to. And the answer is both of them. This class is three credits of lecture and one credit of laboratory. So it's a four-hour course. You cannot just take lecture or you cannot just take laboratory. You have to take both of them and you have to make better than 60% in both of them in order to get credit for the one class. So it appears on your schedule as two different classes, but it's actually just one class. If you're watching this video, it's because you signed up for an online lecture. Now, you may have an online lab also, or you may have an in-person lab. I am not your lab teacher, but I can answer questions for you about your lab but you should reach out to your lab teacher for lab-related questions and lecture questions you send to me. We are trying something new this semester, and I'm struggling with it, and I know that some of the students are struggling with it also. We are trying to take all the information that you're going to learn this semester and chunk it out into five blocks or modules. The first module seems to upset students the most because the first part is just general, what is anatomy, what is physiology. So it's just some terminology that you need to learn. But the second chapter is chemistry. And we cover pretty much an entire semester of chemistry in two hours, which is a little bit nerve-wracking. Especially since a lot of the students either haven't had chemistry at all or they had chemistry such a long time ago that they forgot most of it. I have given you extra worksheets and I've given you a periodic table so that when you're doing block one or module one, you'll have a little bit of extra help on the chemistry. And we have tutors. They're online, we have tutors that are in person, and then of course you can always ask me questions. You're going to have 10 labs, and as you see, they're divided up into the first three labs you'll have a test over, the four through six you'll have a test over, seven through eight, and then nine through 10. So you're gonna have four tests for lab, and you're gonna have five tests for lecture. It became extremely obvious to me that you guys, some of you, have not read your syllabus because I'm getting questions like, well, you know, my phone isn't working. What can I do? My Chromebook isn't working. What can I do? It tells you right here, required technology. You must have access to the Internet. Now, you don't have to have it in your house. You can come to one of the campuses and use the computers and the Internet that's provided for free at all the different campuses of BCTC. So you do have access. You have to have a computer or a laptop. You cannot use a tablet, a pad. None of those things are going to work for you when you're trying to take a test. So you're going to frustrate yourself. And the people who tend to try to do it on a tablet are the ones who wait until about an hour before the test is due. And then I get these frantic emails around midnight. You know, what can I do? What can I do? And I'm like, nothing, because you can't run it on a tablet. So I've given you a Respondus Lockdown Browser test. So it's not really a test, but when you click on the test to take it, it opens up the Respondus browser and checks to see if you are running on a computer that's going to be able to take tests later on. So I've gotten a whole bunch of emails from people trying to open up Respondus, and it will not 
work unless you have a computer or laptop. It has to have a webcam, so it's one of those little cameras that can see you, and it has to have a microphone. So you're not going to have that available on some of the other technology. Your textbook is by Marieb. Uh, she's passed on, but she has written a really good textbook, and so it's being continued on in her name. They're on the 11th edition right now, and this is included for free for you within your Blackboard. So I'm going to be showing you the Blackboard site in a minute after I go through the syllabus. But a lot of the students are going over to the bookstore and they're buying a copy of the textbook. I think it's $56 because it's a, a, a later edition. It's from two years ago. I perfectly understand that, but you do not have to buy a hard copy. You've got the online copy if you don't mind reading. Now, the textbook, you can read on your phone, you can read on your iPad, things like that. You just have to have a laptop or a computer to take the exams. Most of you have done the no-show assignment, and that and unfortunately, it's because some students will sign up for financial aid, they'll collect the financial aid, and they'll never show up for class. So they get away with that for a semester or two, getting some money, but they end up with no education. And then when they decide later on they really do want an education, they've already uh, made themselves unqualified because so what we're trying to do is catch those students early on and convince them either to give back the financial aid or to actually take the class and give it their best try. I want to spend some time talking to you about cheating. I know that it is very very widespread and I know that there are people who try and sell you copies of the test I know that it's very, very easy to try to slip your phone out and look up a few answers in the middle of a test. This is one of the reasons we use the Respondus browser because it uses your camera and it checks to see if you're looking at other pieces of paper or if you're talking to someone while you're taking the test. It'll see if you get your phone out and start looking at your phone. So it's recording what you're doing as you're taking the test in an attempt to keep you from cheating. There's another reason, well, several reasons you shouldn't cheat, but the number one reason is you're gonna go on, hopefully, into some medical field, whether it's radiography, search tech, whatever it is that you're going into, you're going to need to pass a national board. So if you go through your classes and you find ways to cheat and you don't bother learning the material, when you go to take your boards, you'll flunk them, you won't get certified, and you will have wasted your time. So don't, don't have high school mentality where you're like, I'm just going to cheat just so I can get out of here. Think about, I'm looking forward to the future and I have to know this stuff in order to not kill my patients, in order to pass the national boards. So it should be a different mindset. Some things that make you feel pressured to make you feel like you have to cheat is the material is, is hard. There's a lot of material. It's not like taking, um, I don't know, for me, art's hard, but at least you don't have to memorize so many terms. One of the jobs that looks like it would be really easy would be doing x-ray or uh, radiographic imaging. So you think, well, you just take the patient and you take some film of them. That's it. You don't even have to analyze the results. You just send it off to a doctor. The doctor looks at it, and they make the diagnosis. So it seems like it'd be really easy. But there's so much involved behind the scenes in medical care, things you need to know in order to be an effective nurse or a surge tech or physical therapy assistant or whatever field that you happen to be going into. 
One thing I do want to tell you before I forget it is on the very first exam, the one that's going to cover chemistry, you are allowed to use a periodic table. So I strongly urge you to print out the periodic table that I gave you and use it. And you can use it on the final exam also. One thing I do ask of you, and it is in the syllabus, when you are reaching out to me with a question, please tell me your name, not just your nickname. Tell me what class you're in. So you're in one of my online Biology 137 classes. So you can tell me that much. And then tell me if you're asking a question about lecture or lab. So that's going to help because usually I get a thing, hi, this is Bob, are we having a test? And I don't know which class you're in because I teach med micro, I teach biology, I teach anatomy physiology. So I don't know which class you're in. I don't know what kind of test you're talking about. Is it a quiz? Is it an exam? Is it homework, an assignment? You know, whatever it is that you need help with, you're going to have to tell me what it is. And then people who text me on the phone, if you just start texting, hi, are we having class? I don't even know who you are. All I'm getting is a text. So you need to say, this is Fred or Sally or whatever. And are we having class at noon on Wednesday? So at least give me a hint as to when I have you as a student. And then that way I can write back and say, oh, uh, no, Tuesday. We, all the classes were called off for snow. So I'll be able to tell you about Tuesday classes. BCTC prides itself on being very inclusive. So I don't think you're going to have any problems with anybody with, with whatever your gender is, with the, whatever your nationality is. We have lots of international students. We have quite a diverse population. We have older students who are coming back. We have kids not only fresh out of high school, but now we're starting to have high school kids who are brought over and they're taking dual credit. So they're getting credit for high school and credit for college at the same time. So we have all sorts of people. You should feel welcome by the faculty and by the other students. It's going to seem very convoluted and confusing, but if you'll just stop and think, okay, there are 16 weeks of school, and we're going to cover about a chapter a week. And with each chapter, you're going to have a homework assignment. And as you go through two chapters, you're going to have a quiz just 10, 15 questions, just to kind of give you an idea if you're studying the right stuff. And then you're going to have a test over that module or that block. Then you're going to do two more chapters and have another test, two more chapters, have another test. So that's pretty much, it's really kind of easy, but once you start looking at it, it gets really convoluted looking. I've already had frantic emails from the students thinking that they have to do all of the assignments for all of the chapters in the first week. I don't know where they got that notion, but they're freaking out. It's like, no, you only have to do one homework assignment after you read one chapter. And then you read the next chapter, and you do one more homework assignment. So it, it's not going to be hard in that I give you a ton of stuff to do, but it's going to be hard because you have to go over the material enough times to where it stays with you. As I mentioned before, all of the exams will be proctored. We use Respondus this semester, so that's the thing they'll be watching through your camera to make sure that you're not tempted to cheat. You have to keep your books closed, your notes closed, all the tabs on your computer have to be closed, so you can't just open up the tab that's got your textbook or your notes. 
So that's, that's a no-no. Last semester, I mentioned that I had been teaching for over 40 years. And in all those years, I had so many grandmothers die, it, I couldn't even count them. Hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of grandmothers died. And so the students were too heartbroken to come to class or take their test or do whatever it was. And I just happened to mention that in class. I said, in 40-something years, no one has had a grandfather die. None. Not once. And so last semester, I had four or five kids who called in and said their grandfather died. Now, if I were that kind of a teacher, I would say, well, you know, I need to see the obituary. But I figure if it's real, then you're going to be so torn up that, that you don't even want to know if, you don't even know where an obituary would be. You're just you're just crushed. Because I know when my family members have passed away, how crushed I have been. So what I do pretty much is I take you at your word and we have to do a workaround. So if you just completely I had one student, every time it came up for a test, this person would have an excuse why they couldn't take the test. And so they needed to take it a week later. So the first time I gave them the test a week later, but then they were already late for the next test. And then they were like, it's not fair. Are you making me take too many tests too fast? And I'm like, no, you decided not to take the test when it was due. And so they're starting to ball up on you. And you've now got several waiting for you to take it. So it's very easy to procrastinate. And I'm a pretty easygoing person, but it is really not a good idea to procrastinate. Just take the test. Don't don't have the grandmother or grandfather die. One way of handling a missed test is just take your other test and average them together. It'll hurt you in the end because your final exam is comprehensive. You're gonna have about 20 questions from the first block, 20 seconds from, excuse me, questions from the second block, 20 questions. So you get like 100 questions, and they're equally from the five different blocks that you're going to be learning. So if you've missed a test, you won't know what kind of questions are being asked. So make every effort. I know that people get sick. I got flu A and croup last semester. And it was so hard to keep going, especially with the flu A. It knocked me down for two weeks. As I mentioned earlier, three-fourths of your class, or three credit hours, is for the lecture part. So that's the one I'm teaching. And then one-fourth, or 25% of the class, comes from your lab. So the lab teacher and I will get together and we'll take your lab score and I'll take your lecture score and we'll put them together and we'll end up with a total of 1,000 points possible. So 750 come from lecture and 250 come from lab. And it breaks it out exactly. So one of the things that I have towards the end of the semester are students who start writing to me and saying, Figure out what my grade is and tell me what I have to make on the final. You guys can do that yourself. Right here is the little table that tells you the final is worth 100 points. You've had five quizzes. You've had five exams. And you've had your chapter assignments, which all add up to be 100 points. So there's, there's the breakdown of each one of the things. 90 to 100 is an A. So there's, it's just the same old grading scale that most places use. For most of the semester, you can withdraw whenever you want to. However, I do warn you, you go, oh man, I got too far behind. I think I'd rather just go ahead and drop this class than try to, you know, get to play catch up. But what will happen is if you don't have a certain number of hours, then they'll take your um, financial aid away from you. So you need to make sure that you check with the people who issue the financial aid and find out whether you can drop the course. Um, some students are here on a, a student visa, 
And if they fall below a certain number of hours that they're taking, then they lose their visa and they have to return to whatever country they came from. So dropping a course is easy. You just fill out a little form and say, I want to drop the course. But the ramifications of it, you need to make sure you know before you go and drop a course. I could spend an hour going over these things, but I'm just going to point out that if you are looking for peer mentoring, students will help you out, tutors, things like that. If you need a student ID, go over to the Student Success Hub. So there's the link that you can click on, and it'll tell you all about it. There's other student services that are available. There's a whole handbook full of them, so you can look at that. Free tutoring. We have it one-on-one. -on -one. We have it in person. We have it online. We have have hired a tutoring company. to that, That's what they do. They just tutor. And so we have access. We've paid money for them to help you, but it's free for you. Counseling. If you, if you have any mental health issues, if you're depressed, if things just are, are getting on your shoulders and you can't carry it any longer, we have counselors you can talk to. So by all means, reach out if you need help. Uh, let's see, technical support. If you're having trouble with your computers, a lot of you will write to me and I've seen so many of the problems, I can solve a lot of the problems for you, like you're trying to take a test on an iPad. So I can figure that one out very quickly. Or you're trying to use Safari on um, a Mac or, or Apple product. And our Respondus does not work with Safari. So you're going to have to use Chrome or Firefox or Edge as your, as your browser, or you will not be able to run. So a lot of the uh, technology problems I can help you solve, but there's a lot of them I cannot. And so we have a wonderful technical support set of people, and they can help you with problems you're having with Blackboard. They can probably tell you what's going on with your respondents if you're having trouble with respondents. So if I can't help you, then we have the technical support people who can and then the Family Scholar House, they'll help you with uh, health issues, community support. Uh, they have a limited amount of money. If you get in a really bind that you desperately need a little bit of money, they can help you out there. So anyway, click on these helpful BCTC resources and see if there's anything there that you need. I know the tutoring is, is valuable. And here are the chapters that are covered in each of the blocks. I told you chapters one and two are just general anatomy, physiology, and chemistry. And then we get into cells and tissues for the next block. And then integumentary is skin and the skeletal system. So that's your skin and bones. And then block four is the nervous system. So that would be your brains and your nerves and um your muscles, and how they talk to each other. And then the last one we're going to do for Anatomy 137 is we're going to use the central and the autonomic nervous system. So you've probably heard about fight or flight. That's the sort of stuff that we'll be covering in those chapters. Now, here we've broken it down into tinier pieces. So by date, you know, like on the first week, uh, you should have read Chapter 1. And the things you want to pay attention to are homeostasis, feedback loops, positive feedback, and negative feedback. And then in lab, you're talking about your directional terms. What is superior and what is inferior? What is anterior, which is in the front? And what is posterior, which is in the back? So that a lot of that, there's some overlap between the lecture and the lab. And then the body cavities and the different membranes. You have serous membranes and synovial membranes. We'll get into the synovial membranes when we get into the joints later on when we get into the bones. Because you're doing this online, 
there's not days off for snow and things like that because you already have access to all the lectures and you have access to the PowerPoints and everything. So pretty much like on the 18th, you're going to have quiz one, which is 10 questions and it's worth 10 points. So here you, here you are going down through the schedule. So it's not going to cover all of chemistry. It's only just going to cover the first uh, few pages of that chapter. And then you're going to go on into how the atoms bond to each other, how they make molecules. And then we talk about inorganic bio biochemistry, which would be things like water. And then we talk about organic biochemistry. And that's all the things in your body that are made of carbon. By the 26th, you should have finished the whole chapter two on chemistry. And then you're going to have your first exam on the 26th. And it's worth 100 points. So you should be writing these down. If you have a phone with a calendar or something in it, you could do that. I used to literally take a calendar and it had big blocks on it. And I would write the syllabus for each class in there. So I knew that I'd have a test in psychology on Wednesday and I have a test in physics on Thursday. And then the one on chemistry was the same day as the one for English. And I'm like, oh, so I've really got to study hard to try to take two tests in one day. But it's, it's essential because if you don't write these dates down somewhere, then you're going to be coming and going, gosh, it seems like it ought to be about time to take a test. And you realize, oh, it was due the 26th, and I forgot to take it. So keep up with these dates. I've had one or two students email me, text me, get in contact with me and tell me, I don't know what to do. I don't know how much of this stuff I should be learning. I don't want to learn stuff that I don't need to learn. And immediately a red flag goes up in my mind because I'm like, oh, no this is not a negotiation to see the least amount of stuff that you can possibly learn and pass the class. You, the idea is to learn as much as you can cram into your head and keep in your head. It doesn't do any good if you just superficially learn it. You actually have to think about it and understand it. Go over it until it becomes familiar to you. Here's something that caught my eye. When you were in elementary school and you were learning how to divide and you were learning how to add, and you had to add 12 plus 13, and that just seems so hard. And now you're looking at 12 plus 13, you know, well, that's 25. And you don't even have to think about it. It's so easy because you have, you have learned it. It's not something you had to memorize and cram into your head. You use it. So my advice to you is read each chapter from beginning to end and stop if you don't understand something and see if you can figure out why you don't understand it. But for those who are anxious, here is something that I had um, the supervisor gave me and I put it in here for you guys. So it tells you the anatomical terms, feedback mechanism, stuff like that. That's in chapter one. And the membranes, the regions, the anatomical terms you need to know, they're in chapter one, part one, chapter one, part two, and chapter 1.5. So she went through the entire textbook and she put the chapters, the pieces of the chapters that you need to read in order to understand these terms. And these are the terms that you're going to see on the quizzes and the exams. So if you've forgotten what a positive feedback mechanism is, then you can go look at, part, at chapter one, part four. So your chapters are divided up into, into point one, point two, point three, point four, and so on. And then getting into the chemistry part, there's the different things that you have to know. Pretty much in chemistry, if you notice, you have to know 2.1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 
7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So you pretty much have to read the whole chapter of chemistry. But if you see in, in the first chapter, there are certain parts like 1.2 that's more important than the others. So I've posted this thing also. And when we get over and looking at the blackboard, I'll show you where I put all this stuff. Your final exam is going to be open for a couple of days between April 26th and May 3rd. One thing I enjoy about teaching at BCTC are there are a lot of unconventional students or non-traditional students, as they're called. They're older. They're coming back to school. They realize the value of an education. They realize that they want to do something with their life more than whatever they're doing at that particular moment. So I just thought this was kind of neat. C.S. Lewis said that you can't go back and change the beginning. But you can start right where you are, and you can change the ending. So you need to just tell yourself, I am going to be successful. I am going to put the time and effort into this class, and I'm going to be successful. Now I've pulled open one of the online lectures for 137. This may not be yours. I have several different sections. So if you look up here, it tells you that you're in 137, Anatomy Physiology with Lab, and this 4236 is the semester. So that's code for the spring 2024. That's what this is. And then the 19Z0 is your the class you're in. So some of you I have in 1501, 1502, uh, 19Z0, Z0, there you go. So those are the different classes that I have that I'm teaching. So when you contact me, you can look on your Blackboard and say, hi, this is Mary, and I'm in your 19Z0 Biology 137 class. And I have a question about brain views. So then I know what it is that you need help with. All right. So the first thing you guys should have done was you should have come into the student quick introduction to Blackboard. That should be the first thing you read because we put it in there the first thing. And you can click on it right there. And it should open up and tell you all about Blackboard. It tells you you have to have a PC or a laptop. Google Chromebooks are not compatible. I mean, it just keeps telling you over and over again. And students go, I can't get my Chromebook to open this up. And I'm like, you clearly have not read any of the information on Blackboard. So but maybe that's because they have a Chromebook and they haven't been able to get on Blackboard to navigate and look at this stuff. All right. So then there's the brain view. So I told you that we paid money to a company to give you free online tutoring. So we pay for it. It's not free, but it's free to you. And you have live support for writing. So it's not just Anatomy um, 137. So they do all the different subjects that you're taking, math. You'll notice that there's two names as your instructor. So I am your lecture instructor, and those of you who are in this particular class have Dr. Rainier as your lab instructor. You will notice that your blackboard looks different than my blackboard because I'm a teacher. I have a bunch of other stuff over on the side like uh, books and tools and attendance and things like that that you guys don't need. So you don't have that showing up on yours. The next thing that you should go to is the start here. So they got that nice big red start here. And if you look, there's a little thing over here. It's called a widget. And if you click the widget, it opens up and it shows you all kinds of things. Now, the important thing for you guys is the syllabus. So that syllabus that I just read to you, 
is right here. And underneath that, every single YouTube for this class is right here. So if you click on it right there, I hope everybody's already been doing this. It tells you for the homeostasis and the body cavities, look at these YouTubes. For the atoms and the chemistry, there's three YouTubes for that. So I have, I have put in the YouTubes, and so you just have to click on them. Or you can just go to Karen White Drake 1, and you can see all the different classes that I teach and all the different YouTubes that I have, uh, including some if you want to know how to make a dulcimer or if you want to know how to make a cathedral quilt or an underwater submarine submersible. They have I have a lot of weird videos on there how to how to make circuit boards things like that. Some other things that are under the start here are academic resources. So it will tell you things that students find valuable, the online students. And then technology assistance, it tells you how to get into the IT department, how to reset your password. But here's the biggie. You get Microsoft Office for free. So that is that is a really nice bonus right there. Again, accommodations and tutoring. Here's information about that. Netiquette. It's for people who are like high school kids just coming into college and they're used to doing the little abbreviations. Uh, I remember L-M-O-A, no, L-M-A-O, laughing my ass off. Um, so people just, you know, type that. And the teachers didn't know what a lot of the abbreviations were. So anyway, there's a specific uh, netiquette or way of behaving when you're corresponding with people and when you're taking college classes. Now, I'm um, a little bit more laid back. I'm an old hippie. from. I started college back in 1969 in the year of Woodstock, and I have grandchildren, so they keep me they keep me young and they teach me a lot of the stuff that's going on the jargon that's going on so i will from time to time put an emoticon in your in your email or your text and that's not proper netiquette but um, i'm old enough i don't care you have only one folder in all of this and every single thing having to do with your lab is in that folder. So here's the one right here. Everything, you've got your lab syllabus, you've got your lab manual, and any test, any homework assignments, anything like that will be put in that folder. So here's your widget. You can touch your widget over there. And now it says, oh, look, we've already got your lab exercise one is available because you're starting out. Lab exercise one. We're already ready with lab exercise two, but it's hidden from you. So after this next weekend, we'll open up lab exercise two. So we're opening it up bit by bit instead of overwhelming you with all the things that are in there for the whole sem um, semester. And then if you want to close it up, you just hit the widget, and it'll close it back up. There's YouTube out there, and that's where I use mostly to put my stuff. But we pay money to Yuja so that we can use their uh, online system where we can put our videos there. The nice thing about YouTube is I've had some YouTubes up for uh, 10 years or so, and the Yuja, we can only use them as long as we pay them. So if for any reason we stop paying them, then they'll take down all of our videos and throw them away. So I put everything on YouTube, except for I'm going to put this one, the one that I'm making right now, to talk you through Blackboard and your syllabus. And I'm going to put that on Yuja. The next thing you should have seen is this. I, this picture really means a lot to me. 
because here I am an older person. That's not me. I'm not that old. And then youth. And it's such a short journey. You know, you think you're going to live for a hundred years, but those years just fly past and you just, you just suddenly wake up one day and you're old and your kids are old and you have grandkids who are having kids. It's amazing. Anyway, so here's your widget opening up. This is just the, the uh, another start here just for biology. And so if you open that one up, um, I have not put a whole lot of stuff in there. But here's your syllabus. And... Uh, Again, so you have it in two places. And here is Mastering AMP. So one of the things, there's a company called Pearson, and they're the ones who publish the Marib textbook. And so along with them, with us getting their textbook, we also get a lot of videos, practice labs, uh, question banks, all kinds of things that they give us. So AMP student links, that's part of the Pearson stuff. So at some point in time, you're going to have to log on to Pearson. But once you've logged on to it, then every time you come back, it'll remember you. So at one time, you will have to, to log on to Pearson. So this one has a widget. So you open up the widget and look inside, and it tells you uh, support, how to master the course home, mastering scores. There's your textbook right there, the Pearson textbook. There's a study area. Whoops, I didn't mean to launch it. Sorry about that. All right. And settings. So these are things that you might need as you're using this. But definitely you'll want the, the e-textbook right there. Pearson e-textbooks. And then there's the section right here that talks about Respondus Lockdown Browser. And if you click inside there, it'll tell you this is what the Lockdown Browser does. You cannot use an iPhone. You cannot use an iPad. You cannot use Safari. You cannot use a Chromebook. So it just goes through and tells you you have to have a laptop and a computer or a computer and it has to have a, a camera and a microphone. All right. And this is just a little simple test. When you see this symbol, that means that you're using Respondus. So when you click in it, it's just, I have successfully downloaded lockdown, yes or no. I mean, so it's not a big test, but we want to know whether or not you were able to get into there. Okay. All right. And then here's our first block. Now, powers that be that are above me have decided that we have to have this new way of presenting the material. To me, this is what it looks like. So if you feel this way, and I've had some people texting me and emailing me saying, oh my gosh, I'm so lost. So I do apologize. I, it's not the way that I would lay it out, but this is the way they've decided to lay it out. And there you go. They pay my salary. So when you get into block one and you do the widget, here's what you have. So there's an overall introduction telling you what this is about. And then ooh, I've hidden off the... the uh, here we go. So here's the stuff that you guys will be seeing. So the first thing you're going to see is a PowerPoint for Chapter 1 and a PowerPoint for Chapter 2. So when you watch the YouTube videos, one of the things that the students asked of me was, would you please, please use a, a YouTube, or not a YouTube, a, a PowerPoint when you're making your YouTube? And I said, okay. All right, because a lot of people like it to be organized and bulleted and everything, and that's you can do very well with a PowerPoint. So I pulled up the PowerPoint, and I started talking my way through the PowerPoint, but of course I had to throw some jokes in here and there, and then I go off rambling and telling stories. But if you want to open up the PowerPoint 
and go through it along with me, then there's the PowerPoint that goes along with the video. But if you don't want to look at the PowerPoint, you don't have to. All right. And then there's the YouTube videos. And that gives you every YouTube video for the entire semester. And then the students, when I teach in person, the students saw that I had a sheet of paper that I was, I would just periodically, I would pick it up and look at it and then put it back down and go on teaching. And they wanted to know what the piece of paper was that I kept looking at. And I said, well, it's my notes that I write to myself. So as I read the chapter, I go through and I say, okay, I got to talk about homeostasis. Uh, all right. I have to talk about coronal versus sagittal. So there's certain words that I have to say. And so I just write those words down on the piece of paper. And it, at the end of the semest semester, at the end of the chapter, there are one or two pages of notes of all the different terms that I think are important in the chapter. So the kids said, oh, can we have a copy of that? I said, well, you can, but, you know, my handwriting's not all that great. And they said, oh, my goodness, it looks like chicken scratching. So the chicken scratching is in there. Let's see if we can pull up some of it. There you go. All right, so that's what it looks like. And if you look at it, you should be able to read it, I hope. So chapter one, you need to know that anatomy is the structure. It's how, how your body is built. The different the bones, the muscles, the nerves, things like that. So it's the structure of you. And then the physiology is what do the bones do? Well, they store calcium for us, they support us, they're anchor points for our muscles to attach to. So their function is the physiology. So you're learning both the anatomy and physiology at the same time. And I think that makes more sense. There are some colleges that just offer anatomy and they don't tell you what anything does. It's just, this is the name of this, this is the name of this. And I don't think it stays with you as well unless you do the physiology at the same time. But that's just me. I've been teaching a long time and that's just the way it seems to me. There are words, a lot of them you already know, like a cadaver, that's a dead body. Dissection means to cut open or cut apart. So you, you dissected animals probably in high school. And when you get into 139, you're going to dissect a pig. So, uh, and then comparative anatomy. If you stop and think about it, it makes sense. You look at how are we similar and how are we different from a monkey. How are we similar? How are we different than a dolphin? So that would be comparative anatomy and comparative physiology. There are several dozen important people that make up the history of anatomy physiology. But in my classes, I only really want you to know two of them. One of them is Hippocrates, because we have the Hippocratic Oath that the doctors, you know, first do no harm. And then I want you to know Schwann because he named the Schwann cells of the nervous system after himself. The others are interesting. Galen, Vesalius, you, you by all means read about them in, in the chapter, all the different famous people. But I don't, I don't put that much importance on those and that historical stuff. Most people know that Darwin is the one who came up with the idea of evolution and survival of the fittest. So that'd be another name you might want to know. And then you look at experimental design. How do you come up with this evidence? How do you prove something? What is a scientific method? So that was a big thing. Before, somebody just look at something and they say, well, that person's pretty smart. We'll just believe whatever he says. And then somebody else said, no, that's not right. And so if they had more money or more prestige, then people would start believing that person instead, as opposed to actually testing something. So they thought that the sun revolved around the earth instead of the earth going around the sun. And anybody who said differently, uh, they put them in jail. You know, you're not allowed to say stuff like that. 
So my chicken scratching is available to you, but you don't have to use it. It just, to me, going through it and looking point by point, say, do I understand that? Did I learn that? Is that important? Is that something she wants to know? And then here's your periodic table right here. You will want to print out a copy of this. Use it for your assignments, your quizzes, your tests. So if you use the internet during a test, you're cheating. But if you use the periodic table, then it's just like using a pencil or a pen or a keyboard. It's necessary. All right. And then uh, Pearson put out a really good review, all of chapter one and lab one. And so I put it in there, but somebody's already written to me and complained. They go, well, I don't know how to find the answers. I'm like, mm, they're in your textbook and they're in your lab manual. So, but I think it's a really good review right there. And then for those of you who like uh, Jeopardy, here is StudyMate URLs. So if you click on that one, and it opens up for you. All right. If you want to look at the anatomy regions, if you want to look at chemistry, here are little Jeopardy games. So you can click directly on them, and they'll take you. So you can do a quiz. So you can just take the quiz by yourself, and they'll give you the answers. You don't have to guess, you know, did I get that right or did I not get that right? It will tell you, yes, you're right, or no, you're wrong, right there. But the challenge is fun. If you have a study partner, you can do the challenge, and you can play it by yourself, or you can play it with two people. You can give yourself names, and, um, oops, I can't be the same person. Okay. And then, here are the things. So you, just like Jeopardy, you click on it, and it says the sural region. Let's see if I can scoot it over a little bit. Which is the sural region? Is it the calf, the armpit, the hollow behind the knee, the neck, or the thigh? All right. We'll, we'll try the thigh. Oops. Sorry. What plane divides the body into equal right and left halves? Is it the coronal cut, the transverse, the median, the sagittal, or the frontal? So equal right and left, that would be sagittal or mid-sagittal. So I've made these for all of anatomy 1 and anatomy 2. So if you get past the skeletal system and you come on down, there's the joints, neuromuscular joints. And we leave off with the Schwann cells, the central nervous systems, spinal reflexes, the brain. But if you keep going, now you're down into the hormone, which is the endocrine system, and you're looking at the capillaries and veins, which is your cardiovascular system, the heart, stem cells, your immune system. Um, you're getting into your mouth, digestion, things like that. So there's the kidneys, liver, birth, genetics, women, men. So there's all a bunch of uh, Jeopardy games or quizzes, whichever way you want to play it for all of anatomy one and anatomy two. So again, it's just something for people who like to play games and like to challenge themselves. It doesn't take you too long to run through the 25 questions that make up each of these. And the more times you go over the material and the more different ways you do it, the more you're gonna retain, the more you're gonna remember. So anyway, so study mate URLs is another thing that I've provided for you in the first block. And here we go. Uh, the quiz, I've got it ready for you, but we haven't finished chapters one and two. So I'm gonna keep it hidden until it's time. And then I'll send you an announcement that the block one quiz is available and you have two or three days to take it. And then here's homework. Now the homework is a little bit different in that 
You can do the homework with your textbook, with your internet, with your friend, it with a tutor. It doesn't matter. And I've made it where you can take it, I think, at least five times. So it'll, it'll take the highest score that you make. So everyone should easily make 100 on all of the homeworks. So there's one homework for Chapter 1 and one homework for Chapter 2. As you can see, we've already got your final exam sitting there, but you can't see it. It's hidden from you. And then at the very end, in the beginning of May, we'll open that up and make it available for you. But here's something that you can see. Much ado about anatomy physiology. If you open this up, it has things like cadaver bookings. So sometimes at the college on the Newtown Road, we have uh, two bodies where people have donated their bodies after they've passed on for our students to look at and learn from for gross anatomy. So periodically, this will not be hidden. It will be available, and I'll send you a thing saying, if you're interested in coming to the Newtown campus and seeing the body, they're going to have a showing. So throughout the semester, they'll have cadaver bookings. So I think that would be uh, kind of neat. Hopefully, I've covered Blackboard and the syllabus enough to where you understand what's going on. But I'm a dog person. You probably heard my dogs barking in the background from time to time. But I'll leave you with this picture. Maybe if you're tilting your head going, I don't know what she's talking about, then feel free to reach out, and I'll see if I can explain it to you one-on-one. -on -one.